as a new sales rep, especially as a business development rep, the pressure is on. This is your first major gig. Congratulations. You're going into this role and you're thinking that you are a great seller and you should have that mentality. However, I want to ensure that you know and you feel that you're a great seller. I'm going to give you three things. There's probably a, a buttload that I could give you, but I'm only going to give you three things today that can help you in your role as a BDR to succeed. You're going to love this one. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast here on TSC TV on YouTube. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, I'm going to point out to you three things. Yes, not two, not five, not ten. Maybe I'll give you a bonus, but I'm going to point out three things you should know before your first BDR role. And if you're going into sales, this is your first gig. Congratulations. If you know somebody going into sales, I want you to go ahead and pass this video on to them. As you can see over the past little bit here, the series that's going to be continuing for the next five to six episodes, we're going to focus on landing your first sales job. That's our theme, and you're going to see different episodes. I have guests coming on talking about why sales is the greatest career. We're going to have guests talking about better selling through storytelling. We're going to have folks talking about things rookies should, you know, to, to know to sell like a pros. And we're going to give you all of these things. And when you're done, when we're completed with all of this, we may even wrap this all up, put them together in a nice bow for you and give you a little bit of content. Maybe something you could download. We'll go back to that in the next, uh, in the next little bit, but stay tuned. But I want to keep you on the edge of your seat. But today we're going to point out three things. And I do have a bonus, as you know, as always. The first one is don't fear or don't take it personal. We're going to talk about that, especially as a business development rep. I, I know I felt that same way when I was doing inside sales. I had some fear. I had trepidations. I was worried. We're going to give you some ideas of how you can make sure you don't have that. Number two, following up more than you think. Sometimes we get all scared and we don't want to follow up. We're going to give you some concepts, give you some thoughts about that, about why it's so darn important for you to follow up. And then beyond that, what we're going to do is talk about a process. Why it's, so, why it's so critical that you have a process. We're going to break that down for you. And then I have another bonus for you. I'm going to tell you about that at the end. But let's tackle the first one. Don't fear or take it personal. I told you this story before, but when I used to play paintball with my friends in high school, I used to be the one that ended the game with a nice, clean camo outfit. Like, there's no paint on me. It's like, Donald must be good. He was like running like Usain Bolt and dodging bullets. No. It was a simple fact that I was a guy going over the corner, hiding behind a tree and letting everybody else go in a firefight. I didn't want to get hit. I was afraid that the, that, that, that paintball might hurt or I might get a weld. I saw what happened to other people. And for many of us as business development rep who may not have ever sold before, but we're going into the sales career, what we start to do, we look at some of the situations on TVs or the movies or what people have said and these horror stories that we research or read on Reddit. And we take those things as like doctrine and we say, it's going to be so hard. I can't do this. Well, I'm not going to make that phone call. What if they hang up on me? What if they do all this? But yes, what if that does happen? Yes, that could happen. Happen. But what if it doesn't? What if they actually do buy from you? And oftentimes when somebody is not interested, when they do hang up on you or say they're not interested, you know what? Usually you can call that person back in like six weeks or six months and they won't even know the difference. They won't even know that you called in the first place. It's not that they keep them tally and saying, well, that dang Barbara, she called me six months ago and she's calling again. I'm going to definitely hang up on her or I'm going to put it on the wall to remember her. They ain't got time for that stuff. So even if you call in a couple of weeks or have somebody else on your team call, it, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But here's the other kicker when it comes towards that this concept. I don't want you to take it personal. I used to take it personal thinking that they're thinking that Donald, you know, that I don't like Donald when I tell them I'm not interested or if they hung up on me or, or rejected me or say I'm, you know, we, we already have something. It's not that they're trying to just they're, they have it out for me. It's the fact that these people have their lives. They have so many other things that they're doing. They're doing. They don't even have time to worry about me, little old Donald Kelly. So here's what I want you to do. Recognize that they're rejecting that offer that they may not know much about yet or the salesperson. Straight up, seriously, think about it. They're on their phone. I mean, they're doing something else, doing some kind of activity. A phone call comes in. They actually answer the phone thinking it was somebody else. And then now they hear a salesperson doing a, an, an invitation or a pitch. And then they tell you, no, listen, I'm not interested. They don't know enough to not be interested yet. They're just rejecting the salesperson, not Junior, not David, not Barbara, not Anthony, not Shanika, no one that you know. It's just the salesperson. Make sense? So put that on the shelf. 
and then let's go back next time. So BDRs, don't take it personal, number one. Number two, follow-up. I want to read you a stat. This one is going to blow your mind when it comes towards the follow-up process. Like, I mean, I think all of us probably have done this before, right? 80% of sales require five follow-up calls after the meeting. 80% of sales require another five follow-up calls. 44% of salespeople, they give up after one follow-up. I'll give you an example. Right now on our team, one of our BDRs, we had this conversation with a prospect. It went well, or he had the conversation initially. It went well. He followed up, followed up. Then he was able to get the appointment. Once he got the appointment, we had another meeting with this prospect. And then the prospect went radio silent. He did preface and tell the BDR, you know, it's going to take a couple weeks, and I'll get back to you or a week. This guy actually went on vacation, so it took like three weeks or four weeks. But my BDR didn't give up. He kept following up. He kept reaching out. And the guy apologized. said, hey, I was on vacation for 13 days. I, I wasn't around. I do want to get back to you. Please send a calendar invite. And boom. If he was all up in his feelings like many other sales professionals are and getting all worried and getting all concerned and saying they don't like me, they don't want to talk to me, they don't want to do anything with me, and don't respond to that prospect, what do you think would have happened? I mean, it's a rhetorical question because right then and there, that's what would have happened. We would not have gotten that opportunity. We were able to get the opportunity, and now we're moving down and we're cooking with, we're cooking with fire right now. Or what one of my friends said recently, we're cooking with some hot fish grease or something like that. We're cooking with some hot fish oil. We're cooking, basically. Now that's what's happening because my BDR wasn't afraid of doing that follow-up. He wasn't afraid of reaching back out. And I want to tell you that same thing too. Put it on your schedule. Do not, do not, do not fear the follow-up. There's money in them, their follow-up. There's a, a friend of ours that wrote a book, um, and I'm going to, it's a link back to it. I think this is episode number two. And she had talked about in, in her book, I think Barbara talked about in her book, the, it was all about follow-up. And she talked about these different stories and different examples of how sales professionals that she know or uh, individuals who she interviewed shared how they followed up within their sales process and how they were able to impact the, uh, the you know, how it was able to impact their career. You just can't be afraid of it. Why? No, man, that's money in them, their follow-up. Yeah, write that down. Money in them, their follow-up. <laughs> yes. Number three is follow a process. Oftentimes, we see sales reps who come out and they find these other sales professionals who just do such a good job. And I've spoken about this before. They're just like flawless in their process. It's like they're smooth like butter. And we're like, man, I want to be like that. These people aren't reading scripts. They're not reading any notes. They just go out and they just do it. So if I'm going to be a great sales professional, I'm just going to go do it, make it happen. What we don't see is that person practicing their scripts. What we don't see is that person behind the scenes doing role play. What we don't see is that person reading books. What we don't see is that individual building years of years of years of experience on top of all of this. And though it may seem like it's flawless, they have practiced. They have gone in and out. They have tried different processes. They've tried different messaging. They've tried a bunch of different things. And it's because of that, that what they do in front of you when it's game time, it seems like it's flawless, but it's because they are, they are following a script, they're following a process, and it's just not visible at that point. So as a new seller, you can't go into the situation and thinking that you're going to, you, you just fresh out the fresh, fresh out the uh, college, and all of a sudden you think you're going to be doing exactly like this person has been doing it for 15 years. You need to put some work in. You need to do some practice. You need to be better. Look at any great athletes. They do the same exact thing. All of the greats have put in years of years. Malcolm Gladwell in his book, he spoke about this idea of that 10,000 hours. Put in that 10,000 hours and then you become an expert, so to speak, at something. In your case as a seller, I'm not saying that you take, need to take 10,000 hours before you can start making, uh, you know, making sales. What I'm getting at, though, is that it takes that 10,000 hours, take that practice, take that over and over ritual to get flawless at your craft. And I want you to do that. I want you to come in with the process. And here's a bonus secret. Don't tell nobody about this now. If you really want to thrive as a BDR, if you really want to succeed in your role, you need to go to somebody in that company that's doing well already, that person I talked about in point number three, and ask them what they're doing. You can pay for their lunch. 
I mean, that's not going to break the bank. You can get Uber Eats for like 30 bucks or just buy them some Jimmy John's or, or, or something for, you know, 10, 15, what, seven, eight dollars. What does this stuff cost nowadays? It's, it, you can just buy them lunch. And if you're not meeting in person with these prospect, with these uh, cl uh, team members, you can do something over Zoom. Send them some food and then talk to them. Pick their brain for that hour. Ask them, what would you do if you're in my situation? What's the top 10 things you would do if you're in my situation if you want to succeed? And they probably will put on a top 10 list to listen to the Sales Evangelist podcast. That's one of those tips, right? But the point is, though, as that bonus tip, go find the best person in that company. See what they're doing. Ask them to, if you can pick their brain, bring value to them, and that value may be a hamburger from Burgerfy. Find out what they want, give it to them, and then voila, you get the opportunity to learn. Sometimes they won't even ask for anything. They just want or take anything from you. They just want to give value, give back, just like we do on this podcast. I hope these things was able to help you as a BDR. You're starting off in your role. You're going to hear from some great guests over the next uh, five, six episodes. We're going to share different insights and tips with you on how you can be successful in your role, landing that first sales job, landing your first gig. We're going to give you all of this. We want to help you. To recap, the first thing that we want to tell you, remind you of is don't fear. Don't take it personal when you get the rejection. It's all good. You learn and you move on. Number two, follow up. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Follow up more than you think you feel, more than follow up, more than you feel comfortable following up. Number three is follow the process. Everyone has a process that thrive and succeed, so you want to follow your process. And then number four, the bonus one, I want you to learn from the best individuals in your company. Learn from somebody else who's doing great things. As always, I share this stuff because I want to help you. I want you to thrive. I've been in your shoes. I want you to find more of those ideal customers. I want you to know what to say when you reach out to them. I want you to be able to close more deals. I want you to be able to learn to write tools that work. And this is why I want you to take advantage of our sponsors. You know, friends out there who are giving you some great offers. You heard them already. Don't pass them off. Take advantage of these offers. Apply them, apply them, apply them, apply them. I promise you, you'll love it. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and hit subscribe. It means a lot when you subscribe or leave us a rating and review. It just it goes a long way when somebody can come after you and see this. But after all of this, after all that you do, the most important thing I want you to do every single day is to raise your level of thinking and go out and do big things. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also, to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.